Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Don't want to give away the uh, the surprise greatest Wolverine comic yet, Ed. First, I'd like to talk about our uh, comics output. We are both working cartoonists, and your next book is Trigger Warnings Red Room, the, the continuing outlaw comic masterpiece. Uh, this will be hitting comic shops in February. This is the cover, everybody, to memorize due to some... Was it malware that got uh, into Diamond and messed up orders? Ransomware, baby. It's hard to tell how many of these are actually going to be out there. Could be a very, uh, a very sought-after collector's item. So whenever Red Room Trigger Warnings Number One hits your local comic shop in February, scoop that up as soon as you see it because these may be hard to come by. Uh, Peach Momoko doing a beautiful variant cover here. Myself contributing a variant cover based on the uh, Zap Comics famous Robert Crumb image. Fantastic. And Ed Piscor doing another variant cover. Hopefully there'll be a second printing uh, cover that will have to be developed maybe, but uh, that's up to you kayfabers at home. So pick up Red Room Trigger Warnings in February whenever it hits your local comic shop. Pick up Red Room uh, Anti-Social Network trade paperback right now wherever you get your comics and books. Uh, local comic shop, bookstores, online. The perfect gift for the horror fan in your life this holiday season. You can pick up my latest book, Street Angel Deadly Scroll Alive, also available wherever comics are sold. This is a collection of all of my image comics about our homeless ninja skateboarder. Eight complete stories in here. These are the best comics I've made. You can see full color, a variety of media and techniques here, and complete stories. So uh, the perfect jumping on point for any age reader in your life. And it even features some stories that weren't printed originally by Image Comics. Pretty hard to find mini comics. Um, holiday specials, Ed, that I would send out to my family for Christmas and then get some really strange looks at Christmas dinner. And you gave them out as trick-or-treat items. And, that, you, and, that your is house, true. and your house never got egg. It did not get egg. The ultimate endorsement whenever you hand out a comic for Halloween and uh, they don't come back for payback later so again available wherever books are sold and uh selling fast and if there's one thing we've learned from this uh current pandemic paper shortages so pick this up if you happen to find it in your local comic shop it's a good shop if they have it but uh take that off the shelf and off their hands and someone will be appreciative this holiday season but what we've been waiting for ed the greatest wolverine comic of all time and it's a bootleg a bootleg outlaw comic by jeffrey brown called dying time how awesome is that cover yeah it's awesome dude it, the hair harkens back to like <laughs> that's a kent williams treatment with the hair the intense inking you know like that's your outlaw quality right there man that is covered covered in marks jeffrey brown at the time he was doing those like uh those like um autobiographical Kind of salty emo kind of yes. books since Death Cab for Cutie type comics and shit. Clumsy, I remember picking up like the first time I ever saw him, his self published clumsy kind of romance comics for the 21st century. They were they were cool. I had no idea this was inside of him. At the yeah, time. right. And then and then stuff like Big Head and stuff comes out. And you know when when you meet Jeffrey Brown, like he's he's got the kayfabe pedigree because he was an X Men dude. Uh, he's got a sketchbook. And Jeff, I'm so sorry. Like my skills have improved, man. Uh, but he has a sketchbook that he gets people to do doodles in. And it was a very specific issue of X-Men that was like his first one. And he gets people to like do a scene or something like from, from that comic. It's the one where, where professor X gets the brick to the head and wakes up like in the Morlocks. Uh, it's a JRJR issue. And, uh, you know, I was taking a look in that thing and, and this is, there was that bifurcation that existed for a long time. Like I really feel like, it's the it's the channel that's really solidifying that you could talk about every you could you could be into everything but there was the bifurcation man like where it's like you're an indie cartoonist you can't you can't imagine that Dan Klaus knows about the Jerry Conway reprints of Fantastic Four even though he does uh, the Jerry Conway rewritten Kirby Lee Marvel's greatest hero shit uh, but Jeffrey Brown like he was steeped in that stuff and now he's doing you know these these uh star wars i think books. he's doing a batman and robin i think was like one of the free, free comic, comic book, book day book comic. Yeah, books. Yeah, yeah so good for him man because i i do think he's a super talented cartoonist and uh this was so much fun to get you know i bought this from him at some small press show i don't know if i should say that and I, I bought I, uh he, he handed it to you for <laughs> for no money but i had to ask about it you know like this was like old school like under the counter kind of stuff and i was so excited because like i saw this you know somebody showed it to me and it's like what is that 
where did you get it? And I had to go there and almost like secret word, like what's the password to get one of these? Um, but just the delight. And this is before like Marvel and DC were doing their bizarro comics and, and you know, tales. having the alternative cartoonists like taking, you know, their take on these characters. So this was like out of nowhere. And you can see dedicated to Art Adams, man, right off the bat. And in 2004, like you could see that and think that that was an ironic joke. Right? Yeah, like, man. Like, like he, this could be cutting promos or like being silly, but it's not. People, you're right. Like if you're, if you're under, I don't know, man, 35, under 30 for sure, you don't remember it. But there was a hard line between alternative and mainstream comics. And man, if you pulled out your Wolverine at SPX, you were going to get some, some comments thrown your direction. And, and it still exists with that, like that older generation. Like I went to the movie set for, for uh, one, of, one of Klaus things for, for Wilson and he was on this like jumbotron TV, like giving us like a little intro uh, and like, now behave guys, like don't pull out your camera and know this. And like, you know, when you go back to your hotel, you guys could talk about Jim Starlin. And, 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 and I'm like, when he says Jim Starlin, there's venom and dissing in that and that could be read that way but but like because that was the time that this shit was made yes. you know but but it's not and jeffrey brown's rendering like good artist this, you know this stuff looks really good like whenever i say this is the best wolverine comic i reread this this week probably first time in 10 years and was shocked by how good it is it's yeah it's incredible and you can't make a comic that, like with this kind of heart uh that can literally like fit into a canon and stuff uh, if if you don't know the material. This is one of those, like, we show off the John Byrne X-Men that he's doing now, and people are like, why doesn't Marvel publish this? The reason is John Byrne said no. Yeah. Uh, Marvel did talk to him about it, and he and he didn't want him to. But this is the kind of comic, like, Marvel should talk to Jeffrey Brown and do an edition of this thing, because, like, the characters are on. I think, like, uh, Jillian Tomaki's, like, Super Mutant Ma Magic Academy is the best X-Men comic that's come out in, you know, 20 years and stuff. It's like, everybody can do the best version of those characters, except the people who are <laughs> slanging the hash and on that Nabisco assembly line. Yeah, whatever whatever the reason is, man, you're right about that. But Kitty Pride, the other X-Men that we're going to see in this story, coming in for breakfast, you know, morning, and uh, having their little exchange. Wolverine's uh, date from the previous night is walking out the door. She, and call, she calls him Sugar, so I first, <laughs> I'm like, oh, is that is that Rogue? But nah, man. It's Thanks a for last night. Yeah. <laughs> and... Kitty Pride does not like it one bit. So it gets the Claremont soap opera-ish stuff in there with Chris. Take a look. Way less words. And it looks like a kitchen. It's like a real, you know, it feels like this is a real place that a couple of people are inhabiting. Yeah, that's a that's a very cheap apartment. That's not the Xavier Mansion. <laughs> no, it, is, it doesn't look like a mansion's <laughs> kitchen. Um, but Kitty Pride getting all fired up. You can be such an asshole. This is a, it's so good. It's, it's right good in character. line with these characters. Yeah, yeah, there's and, good And she leaves too. and slams the door. Good cartooning there with your sound effect as she's walking out there angry. It's legit comics, man. And uh, Wolverine, like, I just don't get women. <laughs> of any age, apparently. I think Stephen Hawking and uh, Albert Einstein both argued with their wives. So, so where do you, uh, <laughs> you, you, you got them figured out? I was going to say, I, I bet you a lot of kayfabers can identify with that sentiment. <laughs> you know, I, I, this happens every year, and it's even more crazy with the cartoonist kayfabe channel. But when we get to holiday season, wives and partners of kayfabers hit us up and all that stuff my husband is the biggest fan and i always am like sad like i hope my voice isn't too grating to you because like i know that <laughs> right. i know that you want to watch veronica mars or or, or, or whatever's <laughs> on tv i don't even know what's on tv anymore <laughs> veronica mars is probably when this comic came out no that's before. the last time i watched tv dude <laughs> uh i'm all red in the face right now and shit uh so i'm like I hope our voices aren't too grating to because it's like I can't it's, imagine. It is true. My wife hates every podcast I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> but they hit me up like, yo, can you do a commission or something for my husband? Which is super sweet. It's a it's very It nice. is, yeah, for sure. So Kitty Pride goes to uh, you know, walk it off a little bit. Wolverine's gotten under her skin a bit and uh men are pigs. And out into the forest she goes behind the X mansion, I assume. And there's even other stuff. You know, yeah, he's older than me, but I still have a crush on him. It's it's to it's that total soap opera piece. Man. It is really great. Like I like this characterization because 
it's it doesn't cross any lines of being like oh okay getting into Tim Vigil outlaw comic yeah, territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 kind of sweet natured, but it feels like it's in line with Kitty Pride as a character in the way I think of her yeah. from reading X Men comics. So I do I, I like that attention to detail a lot. So she's out in the woods and she's kind of going through thinking about this exchange when out comes a zombie. And I feel like Walking Dead was newish. And then there was that one comic that Tom and and Scott Mills. We're, we're going to work on it called Zombie right. Kamikaze. Yeah, that's right. I and forgot it, all about that. And Tom was like, we don't need too much zombie stuff on the <laughs> racks. Yeah, zombies aren't. <laughs> can't sell a zombie comic. Uh, so yeah, zombies zombies were fresh. You know, like like uh, there was a lot of excitement around Walking Dead. I love this too, her like phasing through trees and stuff. Yeah. It's a great excuse to show her kind of uh, her powers. And you know, Wolverine's mostly a good guy. He kind of comes around. He, he's thinking, yeah, that... That's a little bit, uh, I should apologize. So he heads out to track her down and uh, is following her scent through the woods, you know, yelling out for her whenever, lo and behold, a zombie attacks Wolverine. That's a good panel, right? Oh, it's so good, man. This was the stuff that would surprise me about Jeffrey Brown is like, you're used to, uh, you know, the, the the romance comics kind of stuff that he was doing, the slice of life autobio looks a certain way. Mm -hmm. I was not ready for him to be a really good Wolverine artist. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into Big Head. And once again, like, it just... It's not Adam Kubert's Wolverine. It's not John Buscema's. It's like, you know, Kent Williams. Harlequin, yeah, I was going to say. Hair. Yeah, Kent Williams, Bill Sienkiewicz, you could see doing like that kind of a hair, you know, like really exaggerate the Wolverine hair. The claws look really good. Yeah, it looks great. And now we're getting to see carnage of him like cutting people up again, getting into the, into the black blood of the outlaw comics. But what a perfect uh, enemy for Wolverine to showcase those claws. And without really crossing any lines, he's killing zombies. Right. This the, is practically a G-rated. The graphomania of Jeffrey Brown cannot be understated because he, he was so voluminous in his output that publishers... Like, he had to have several publishers at once because they just didn't want the stuff to mm -hmm. compete on the racks. Like, uh, you know, with, with the other books and things. And then he has time to do this sort of stuff. And whenever I did my... Uh, my WYSIWYG thing, um, and, you know, we, we shared a, a hotel room uh, in San Diego, and he had, like, the little government cheese box that, like, card sets come in, and he had filled with those blank Strathmore cards of, like, cards that he drew, and he's like, oh, yeah, just like when I'm watching TV or something, like, I'll draw a couple things smart. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's super smart, but he just never stops. Yes. He never, never stops. You know, you see it. We, we see it in some of these cartoonists. And, and it's kind of visible in a page like this. Yeah. Like, you can see it's a guy who draws a yeah. lot. And uh, some of my favorite comics, you know, like, that's a good ingredient if you're, just, if you're looking at this stuff. But as the, as the zombies start to multiply, looks like I'm going to have to dive right in. Yeah. Gotten distracted. And now, here we go, man. A centerfold, no less. This is how you build a book, by the way, because these books... They open naturally to the centerfold. Put some money in there. He's he, he's a cartoonist, and, and he's thorough. Like, of course this is what you do in a centerfold. One of my big regrets is never buying any of the originals from this. He had them there. around yeah. for a little bit, and, yeah. and they were affordable. I can't remember what they were, but they were really way less than they should be. And stupid, man. Just stupid. The indie cartoonist way. Should, should have been we, mortgaging my future with this original art you, stuff. You know, we think about that stuff. Like, it's like we're, we're pretty solidified in our positions now. Like... We were kids, you know, like it's true. 50, a hundred bucks meant, meant a lot. Like that's, that's two weeks worth of groceries back then and shit. Yeah. No doubt about it, but I do have regrets on it. Yeah. You know, it's still a lot of original art that I saw that looked amazing. At that same like, show. Wish I could look at him again. At that same show, uh, there were from hell pages yes. for, for $60. And I do think you actually came away with a Roger language, uh, for, from, I do from, have a from, Roger language. You, yeah. You, you got it on my there. wall. So I, I, I look at that every day. Because uh, Roger Language had had super beautiful pages that were yes. like fifty bucks and stuff. That's the thing. Like these guys are so good, and it's all on the page. Like it's all in the original. There's there's nothing here that's being added in Photoshop. Yeah. What you see is what you're getting there. So it's cool. Wolverine gets infected a little. You know, gets bit. So you see his healing factor has to keep him from being a zombie. But it's kind of fun to see him like you know struggling with that and, and having his head get sort of woozy and stuff, and then waking up blood splattered on his face. It's good, it's good zombie stuff. So dispatches with uh, the last of the zombies, and he's still looking for Kitty Pride, And he's found her. And man. Good reveal. Comes. Yeah. You okay, kid? Not okay. Not okay. It's so sad. She got it. Wolverine's holding her at bay so she can't bite him. 
close up and then the snicked off panel. Off camera, puts her down. And and dude, like there's concern in his face. There's good there's good acting. He closes his eyes whenever he actually uh, pulls the trigger there. It hurts. It does hurt. And you know, he's he's now apologizing because he just killed her, but the last time he was talking, he said, I should go find her and apologize. Yeah. It, like, as a story, it, it just is such good good comics it, writing. It and gives everything. me chills, really. And, uh, you know, burning the bodies of all of these, all the zombies. It, just brutal, in a way. And then, what's he doing here, Ed? He's cutting himself. This is like the emo, uh, you know, cutting himself, this, right? This is Jeffrey Brown, and it, that was the era of, like, the emo <clears throat> navel gazer... So he can't help that part, but but like it works so well here because it's like and and also it's like, you know, go go with the train tracks, not across the street, uh, kind of like, you know, um, and then it heals, and so it's just it it's it's the turmoil of being Wolverine yeah, all in pain. one page. The, the, the pain never, yeah, he can never get away from the pain, and it's all in one page, man. Just just showing you that, like he just went through the worst. It's experience of his life. It's he's a vampire, you know. Like all his friends are going to die around him. Uh, it, com it communicates a whole lot. It's really a good, impressive comic. That's the other thing. Like I hadn't really seen this kind of a bootleg at the time. Yeah. And when I did see it, then it's like, okay, is this kind of a jokey? This is fun, you know. Watch, right. watch this uh, cool cartoonist draw Wolverine, something different. And then it's like. No, it's legit. Like, he made a good comic, like a really good Wolverine comic. Uh, was not expecting any of that, and just... It holds up as well now, almost 20 years later, as it did the day that I got it. Before the cameras were on, we were like, what the fuck was the name of the Chicago crew? Oh, Holy Consumption. The Holy Consumption yeah, crew. Yeah, um, Paul Hornschmeyer and... Uh, Anders Nilsson. Anders Nilsson, who is self-publishing his book, Tongues, right now. Uh, there used to be these groups because there was also like the St. Louis gang with Kevin Heisinger and Ted May and those U dudes. USS Catastrophe, St. Louis crew. That was uh, this is that was the thing. Like you know, I would get mini comics from these different places. You'd have like some central website. You know, probably probably one poor guy responsible for mailing all the orders. <laughs> but it was how I would end up picking up like or keeping up with some of these guys that I would meet at uh, whatever show, Mocha or SPX, and then it'd be pick up whatever their new stuff was through their websites and. And, you know, I always thought of us as like we were the Pittsburgh crew as a result. You get two or three guys traveling to the shows together from whatever city. Uh, but the Chicago group was, was one of those early gangs that I, that I kind of would follow all their comics. Totally. Absolutely, man. Very, very fun to look at. Not too many copies of this thing floating around, but there's word on the street a lot about this comic. You could Google it and, and read uh, interviews and, and uh, see reviews from, you know, Sean Hoax and people who did get their <laughs> hand on, on a copy or two. It, it was a sensation. You know, that was the other thing. Like, those shows used to be small enough that, like, there'd be a couple of books that, that you'd show up and have no idea they existed and the buzz would go through. And yeah. it'd be like, man, try to make sure you get a copy before they'd sell out because it'd be about ah, 50 mini comics or whatever. And if it made enough noise, man, those things would go fast. So you had to, you had to kind of like keep an ear open for uh, what's the book I need to pick up here, yeah, you know, yeah. in terms of a mini comic, because it's not like you could find this at your local comic shop back home. And you would have to cut through the tension in the room to get to that other space, man, because Ted Rawl is in one corner, and Danny Hummins <laughs> in the other, and they're just staring at each other from across the ballroom with their lawyers in tow, looking to sue each other. Different era, man. <laughs> Let's get the hell out of here, man. k Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what is out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. You can also see a lot of my original art, script, layouts, the process that I make the comics I make at Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room, the Antisocial Network book collection in stores now. Not going to be for long, man, so get it uh, if you see it, because you can't take for granted that it's going to be on the stands next time you go to the comic shop. Red Room Trigger warnings issue number one going to hit the stands in february due to the paper shortages at, at all the uh the print facilities i want that thing to sell out on day one so go to our link trees in the description below this video subscribe to our patreons uh pre-order and order these comics what else we got you subscribe to the cartoonist kfabe e-newsletter also at the links below this video and you can find cartoonist kfabe t-shirts and merchandise like this homage to the uh, famous roddy roddy piper t-shirt and uh, that's what it looks like on a hat. I had to try one of their hats, and I was really happy with how that one turned out. It's a good one. So you can find those links below this video. Give them those marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.